Hello, this is Juan Rivera. My website is helicycles.org. And uh, you can email me if you have any questions after watching this video at Juan, J-U-A-N, at helicycles.org. This video is about how to do a static balance on the helicycle transmission pulley. In the next slide, I'm going to show you what my stock pulley looked like before I decided to balance it. And then I think you'll understand why I'm doing this video. Something that I think needs to be kept in mind is all of the components in the tail rotor drive system, starting with the pulley through all three sections of the drive shaft and the tail rotor itself, are all rotating at the exact same RPM and all of those various components are in sync with each other. So when you're using a vibration analyzer to try and dynamically balance your tail rotor, it's seeing the combination of all sources of vibration at that RPM. And so when you're moving washers around on your tail rotor thinking that you're dialing in uh, uh, corrections for the tail rotor you may also be trying to compensate for vibrations in the drive shaft and in the pulley at the other end of the drive shaft so i think the sensible way to do this is to remove the tail rotor remove the drive shaft do a static balance on the pulley and you'll see why I think that's necessary in this next slide. After that's done, install the pulley and the first section of drive shaft. Move the accelerometer to the bearing mount at the end of the first section. Balance that out. Add the second section. Move the accelerometer to that bearing mount. Balance that section. Add the third section move the accelerometer back to its final location on the tail rotor, uh, probably on the, either the frame or the tail rotor gearbox. Balance out that third section as best you can. Once you've got all that dialed in, then put the tail rotor on and balance that in the usual way. That makes sense to me. And obviously the reason to do all this is that uh, imbalances cause vibration and vibration causes wear. So now let's take a look at a stock pulley and see why I uh, started down this path. This is an unmodified pulley. And you can see where it's been balanced. So Eagle thought that was the heavy side. And they drilled a couple holes down there to lighten it. Only it's still the heavy side. There's one hole. There's the other hole. So even after Eagle has taken a whack at balancing this pulley, they didn't go far enough. Okay, you've seen what the unbalanced pulley looks like. And imagine, you know, that thing is pretty heavy, rotating at 3,000 RPM and pretty much hard mounted through the transmission directly to the frame. That's going to vibrate the frame, which is going to, you know, the vibration is going to work its way all the way, the length of the frame all the way to the tail and interact with any vibration in the tail rotor itself, which I think is going to confuse any attempt to really balance the tail rotor. So what do we need to get the job done? You need two smooth straight edges. You need some modeling clay. You're going to need some JB Weld or some other 
epoxy. Uh, I got that stuff at the hardware store. The modeling clay, you can get at an art supply or a hobby shop. Uh, you need a very accurate scale of some sort. Uh, I used a triple beam balance scale uh, that goes down to tenths of a gram. But all you need to do is be able to, um, basically, you're going to balance the thing out with clay and put clay on the light side. I'm going to go through this in a minute. Once you've figured out exactly how much weight you need and where it needs to go to balance the pulley, you need to be able to mix up the exact same weight in epoxy, exactly the same. And then you're going to apply that epoxy in the same spot where the clay was. So that's why you need a very accurate scale. And then, of course, you'll need a pulley mandrel. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, you can see pretty much how I did it. Um, looking at the video, there's a shoulder machined into the back side of that. And it's a press fit. So the pulley just uh, works its way over the thick part of this mandrel uh, held by friction. Slowly ooch it back until you bump it against the uh, shoulder machined into the back side and you're ready to go. So um, you can either make your own or borrow mine. Right now, uh, Tim Dernick has it. So if you'd like to uh, borrow it from him, feel free give him a call and uh, arrange to borrow it once he's done with it now i'll show you uh, the steps that i use to actually do it i think there's two schools of thought here for balancing uh, this pulley um, eagle assuming they're the ones that drilled those holes are of the uh, first method uh, remove weight from the heavy side by drilling holes in the pulley I don't like that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's difficult to do. Number two, holes concentrate stress. Number three, how do you know when you've removed enough until you've gone too far? And once you do that, now you've got to drill a hole on the other side to compensate for the fact that you've removed too much material from the heavy side. So I think it's, it's difficult to uh, do a nice, neat, tidy job. Uh, and mistakes are difficult to correct. I like my method much, much better. Put the weight on the light side. Add weight to the light side. Don't remove weight from the heavy side. It's easy to do, doesn't create any stress concentrations, and mistakes are easy to correct. If you didn't put enough epoxy on there, add more. If you put too much on, grind some off. So uh, I think that's a no-brainer. So the procedure is pretty simple. You're going to take those two straight edges, come up with some sort of a spacer that's wide enough so that the straight edges will clear the pulley. And uh, the mandrel then will ride on those two and there'll be enough clearance so that the pulley doesn't scrape either one. Mount those in a vise, clamp the whole thing into a sandwich, clamp it shut. And then make sure that the uh, that those two straight edges are absolutely parallel. And I think what I did, it's been two years since I actually did this. I think what I did is I have several hunks of uh, 6061 that are half inch thick. And I think I took one of those plates, set it on top of the two straight edges once they were snugged up in my uh, mill vise. And then I went around uh, both straight edges and tapped with a rubber hammer until everything was absolutely flat, parallel with no, you know, that wasn't rocking back and forth or anything. So once I did that, then I cranked the uh, vise nice and tight and those two straight edges were exactly parallel. Now you've got to get them exactly horizontal once you've got everything uh, locked into position. So you're going to level the vise using uh, shims of some sort. And um, eventually you're going to, it's sort of a circular flow here. When your pulley's out of balance, it's going to be pretty hard to know uh, when they're absolutely horizontal. But as you get closer and closer to having them balanced, you're going to notice that the pulley wants to run downhill going one way and it's going uphill the other way. 
In other words, it'll slow down going in one direction, and it'll speed up going the other way, and you'll see that in a minute. So as you get closer and closer to a good balance, you can then tweak your shims to dial in the uh, the uh, the horizontalness, for lack of a better word. You want to be right angles to gravity, uh, and you'll be able to get closer and closer as the uh, balance improves. So you're going to mount the pulley on the mandrels. It's just friction. Push it back until you hit the uh, shoulder. Stick the mandrel uh, across the straight edges. Line it all up. And then what I did, you'll see in a minute, is I put a little dab of clay at each end of my straight edge. So the pulley, you know, if I had a little lack of attention, didn't roll off the end and fall on the floor and put a big dent in it. So I've used the little dabs of clay as bumpers to keep that from happening. Then you're going to roll the pulley back and forth, allow it to settle. You then mark the heavy spot, obviously at the very bottom. Go exactly 180 degrees up to the light side. Take a dab of that clay, stick it in that spot. Keep going till you've nulled out the heavy side and you have it perfectly balanced. You're going to go around in a loop until you get that just right. Once it's perfectly balanced, then you're going to remove the modeling clay and you want to match up. You're going to make a batch of epoxy and you want to match the weight of the epoxy to the weight of the clay. And with my triple balance uh, scale, triple beam balance scale, uh, it just has a little plate where you put the, the thing you're trying to weigh. So I put, uh, put a sheet of clean white paper down there put the, the glob of clay on it, zeroed everything out so that it was perfectly in balance, removed the clay, mixed up a, a batch of epoxy on top of it that was a little overweight, and then I simply removed uh, little dabs of epoxy with a toothpick or a little piece of something until it, it balanced again. So now the, the weight of the epoxy was exactly the same as the clay. Then I carefully scraped all of that off and I put it on the back side of the pulley in the, in the point that I'd marked out uh, where the clay came from. And uh, I put it up against the web. Uh, that my heavy spot was behind a web. Uh, yours may not be. So I put it uh, behind, uh, you know, an exact rock spot opposite the heavy spot, right where the clay was tilted the pulley so that the uh, the epoxy would ooze up against that web and not ooze out towards the end of the pulley and just let it sit there till uh, till it was set and that's it so the next uh, slide I'm going to show you my uh, machined pulley that has a, uh, a second pulley on there to drive my 55 amp alternator conversion and this is after it was balanced. Okay, here we go. This is a drive pulley off of the Helicycle transmission with my custom 55 amp alternator drive pulley, the little one, which I have been balancing for the last little while. It's like sawing legs off of a stool trying to get it level. I'm down to switching fat washers for thin ones. And I think you can see it's a whole lot better than uh, the stock one, which is on the other video that I shot. So I'm going to call this good enough. This clay is to keep me from going over the edge.
what I did after milling the uh, fan blade tabs off of this pulley, then I went over it with a fly cutter, and uh, and then finally I hit it with my uh, fine deburring wheel. Now whether this is heavy uh, heading for a heavy spot or just rolling downhill, it's hard to say. Looks like it's going to go all the way back, which tells me I'm probably going downhill. Let's try that again. So it's probably rolling slightly uphill here. As it doesn't rock back and forth, I think I'm happy. Thought I was going to stop there for a second. It's picking up speed. It's not uh, an imbalance. It's going downhill. It's going to go all the way to my little stop. So that's it. Um, the process I used, I'm not sure I'd do it again this way is I balanced the uh, transmission pulley by itself using dabs of this um, this uh, modeler clay and you can just stick a wad on where you think the light side is and once you get it balanced then I measure the weight mix up a, a glob of, uh, of epoxy I'm using a J and B weld. And I put that on the back side on the inner part of the uh, of the pulley. Let that set, and then uh, that's it. So that's my weight. I'm not drilling holes to lighten the heavy side. I'm adding weight to the light side because structurally, I think that's a sounder approach. Then when I put my pulley on and all of the mounting hardware course that threw the balance off again and I basically started over and ended up with another little blob of J and B weld in a slightly different location. Once that set then I was down to switching fat washers for thin ones pretty much and uh, what you see is the result of a couple hours of fiddling around with it. It's so much better than the stock pulley. I think it's it's not worth uh, doing any more. And uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be safety wiring pairs together. These heads are drilled, uh, so the differences in the weight of the safety wire is probably going to swamp out the little bit of uh, of imbalance that's left anyway. So it's not really worth the effort to put more time into it. And as you can see, there doesn't seem to be a heavy spot that I can detect anyway. It's just rolling downhill till it hits a stop. I can, uh, I've got a little shim down here uh, from a feeler gauge, about 18 thousandths just to level this out. And if I go to 20 thousandths or 22 thousandths, then it starts rolling the other way. So it's very, very close to level but there's so little friction here that 
it's very difficult to get it completely level and you know the only way to to really know is to just roll it back and forth and see if it seems to speed up going one way and slow down going the other so I think that's uphill and I think this is downhill so that's it uh, if you have any questions or you're interested in the helicycle or how to balance the pulley look at my other video and you'll see what I started with and you can go to my website at http www.helicycles.org Helicycles spelled H-E-L-I-C-Y-C-L-E-S So thanks for watching and that's it. This pulley's balanced as far as I'm concerned. Well that's it. I think it's pretty simple. As I say, uh, I think the only tricky part was the mandrel and feel free to borrow that. Um, if you'd like to check out my my website, there it is, www.helicycles.org. You can email me at juan at helicycles.org. Thanks for watching.